Sometimes when playing with a transformer, one alt mode is just not enough, and that is why we have triple changers. Yep, because once upon a time, just transforming into a vehicle wasn't giving enough, so they started transforming into two vehicles with mixed results, but they are well remembered, remembered enough to actually get modern toys. So today, it's going to be Astro Train from the classic line, wait, Henkei. Astro Train, the Japanese version, as I no longer have the original American. And you can clearly see the difference right off the bat. They went straight up cartoon coloring for him. As you would expect Japan, for a long time the rule was uh, the US version, Hasbro's version, is more closely related to the original toy. That's why Rumble is still red most of the time over in the US. However, uh, they also in Japan they lean way more toward how they looked in the cartoon. And thus we have this nice shade of slightly metallic gray and a lot of purple. It's a really nice shade of purple too. Very vibrant. Really enjoy it. As we can see here, he is in his space shuttle mode, the one he's seen in the most often because you know it's either that or a train. You know I can either I could either ride on rails that don't move anywhere. Or I could fly through space. It's not exactly an apples and oranges thing. Wait, the shuttle mode itself is nicely detailed. As mentioned, the paint is very lavishly slapped on everywhere they could get it. And the, there's a slight difference between a little bit of this paint and the plastic purple, but not too noticeable. So the color matching isn't too bad on this one. Red windshields, uh, that's a little odd, but... You know, it makes them stand out. It's one of the few things on this entire toy that is that red shade. So we can go with that. Wings, as you can see, there are some there's some normal details you would expect on a space shuttle. A lot of little lines and grooves along the edges of the wings. And the Decepticon symbols right where you'd expect them, right on top. Now, Henke, of course, was known for really crazy use of chrome. And if you haven't noticed it yet, it's all in the rear, where it's... Uh, pretty much covering the entire engine section, and what I like about it is they had the they had the attention to give it multiple colors of chrome. The engines themselves are the uh, silver, and then a metallic purple, covering most of the back. If you want, like, if you want like really crazy Henke chrome, go check out what they did to Classics Grimlock. It's kind of hysterical, really. But yeah, that is the shuttle mode in a nutshell. That's pretty much all it does. Uh, there's no hole for mounting his weapon except on the bottom, where it mostly just acts as storage, which yeah, we'll need to get rid of that anyway. But yeah, I, I'm kind of a fan of it. However, the Henke color scheme does favor the bullet train mode quite a bit, as it's Japan. Trains are a much bigger deal over here, over there, whereas... Us in the U.S., we have NASA, and we have space shuttles, and all of that fun stuff that comes with a space program. So, uh, over in, in, in the U.S. version, the Deco, much closer to a space shuttle. It did a lot to hide things like the obvious windows on the side of the space shuttle, the, uh, you know, the obvious shape of a bullet train just hanging off the side. So, it takes a little bit of an imaginative license here, but... Anna, it still looks okay to me. Like, I think it does enough to get away with it. Though the US version gets away with it a little bit better. So, we'll start transforming him into said train mode by taking the wings down and getting these fully transformed, rotated around, and snapped down like that to go from bulky wide to narrow thin. Need to take this, rotate that around, and split it open very carefully because it's chromed on the inside we'll take a better look in robot mode landing gear goes down wings go all the way back that folds down as do the wings all the way it all kind of locks together in here in some weird way hang on yeah there we go gotta get them inside those little tabs and that it's going to be our bullet train mode. And you can see very different look to it. You can see all the colors are the same. Not a whole lot more is revealed. Maybe a little bit more white here along the side. But 
for the most part, uh, pretty much the same. There is some very clever usage of the paint and patterns here. You can see the purple from the shuttle mode is still visible, but it does kind of try to blend down into the natural paint or uh, natural plastic color that's going through the train mode. It's not a bad job. Now, of course, like the big detraction to this is the fact that the rear section is a big block because it's made of 90 degree folded wings. It's a downside. I, I mean, every triple changer has some sacrifices in order to make the two mode thing work. For the playability it provides, I think that's pretty much a fair trade off. He still doesn't look too bad, and for the most part, the bullet train mode does look good, and as we pointed out, it does very heavily favor the bullet train on this release. You can see the windshield is a much more natural color, and the line detail, a little bit more like what you would see at a Japanese rail station. All still well and good. Now, there is one detail. Uh, I don't think bullet trains are powered by jet engines. I haven't been to Japan, haven't ridden the bullet train, but... I'm just guessing based on what I've seen in photos, and I've never seen rocket boosters on any train I've ever seen. You know, outside of things that like might travel through time at some point. But besides that, this is a little bit out there when you start looking at some of the details. I don't think it looks too bad, though. There are a few details, like, I, I kind of wish this had been painted in a little bit better. It's hidden in the other vehicle modes, so the windows might have given this a little bit more of a solid look all the way down. For the most part, I think they did the best they probably could, considering it's a deluxe size triple changer with two radically different modes. So, what about the robot mode? If these two modes have eh, their little quibbles and little bits left over from their opposing mode, what about the robot? Does it bring it all together? Or does it, what am I even asking? This toy came out in 2008, 2006 for the American release. You probably know the answer by now. So, we'll make sure these are in the little tabs. Ah, there we go. This gets split again. Can rotate the arms down. And now we can start actually forming up the robot by pulling the legs, splitting them. This has to rotate all the way around. Shoulders fold down like so. We reveal the arms popping off the shell of the train. Now, the back piece has to go down to fold up the head. Come on, don't be stubborn now, we're almost through. Back piece goes up, engines go down, and there, no uncertain terms, we have our Astro Train. Looking quite good. I will admit, for as many sacrifices as the two vehicle modes make, he wears it really well in robot mode. I mean, all the way around, he's a nice, solid bot. The colors look good. And again, because this is the Japanese release, very akin to the cartoon's color scheme and overall look. And of course, on these reviews, as we usually do, we'll go with the head first, because why not? And of course, it is very Astro Train. This is where I really like the choice, because while I do, or while I used to have the classics version, and I did really enjoy the Classics version, I'll always know Astro Train as purple and gray. Because, of course, I grew up obsessed with the cartoon, and then I became a full-grown adult obsessed with the cartoon. Either way, he still looks quite good. And this is how I always wanted him. So I'm happy it worked out. The one thing about him, since pretty much everything was shown in one mode or the other, not a whole lot of new details revealed, really. You still see some vestiges of both modes. I mean, of course, you have, you know, big shuttle pieces hanging off because that's about all they could figure out to do with them. The train wheels are still attached to the pelvis and all that. The only real new details we get to see is the midsection, which is nicely molded, and they combine the paint and the plastic to give it more of a sleek down look, kind of disguise that blocky shape the plastic has. And, of course, there is the chromed chest piece, kind of matching the original, but kind of flashing out a little bit, too. I do appreciate that it is kept small, so it does not hinder any of the articulation that we will demonstrate here in a bit. No, in fact, no. Not in a bit. Right now. Right now. I said so. My review. I we're doing it my way. 
Head is ball jointed, which means it goes left and right. It also has upward range of motion. Nice to have. Ball jointed shoulders. Plenty of movement there. And the ball joint is on a hinge inside the torso, which allows you to get a wider range of motion out of it. The, the, uh, the kibble here form the shoulder guard also has a hinge effect to it so if you if it's in the way you can get it out of the way nice to have ball jointed elbow which provides fine range of motion it's below the waist where things start getting a little bit wonky there is no waist articulation because he's got this huge wing pack behind him of course hips go outward and then hinge forward in a very energon-esque method however unfortunately there's no rotation up here so instead of having any kind of universal movement, it's just sideways, front ways, and there's not a whole lot of like meaningful motion you can get. There is a rotation below the knee, the knee which does get to 90 degrees, just barely. But it doesn't really do a whole lot, and the knee has to be bent in order to get full rotation both directions. For some reason on mine, it rotates that way fine when the legs are straight, but not the other way. So the knees have to be bent in order to actually get that level of rotation. I don't know, maybe it's just the weird plastic shaping on mine. It might be a mold variance. I have no idea. I will tell you the landing gear from the vehicle mode can still come down here to give you more heel spurs if you do manage to get him into a pose that's a little bit more out there and needs a little bit more stability. However, his feet are rather large and completely flat on the inner edge, which means he balances quite well in most positions I've ever tried him in. So, not a big deal. As we're long as we're here, we can plug his rifle into his hand, like so, and give him a more complete look. It can also mount on the top of his train mode. I do apologize for not demonstrating it. I forgot! I know, sometimes I get into a hurry on these these random reviews, so eh, you'll excuse me, I do kind of goof every now and then, but at least I can, I can admit it. But I think we came out pretty clean on this one. Astro Train stands pretty well. I know he kind of takes a lashing for those sacrifices he makes in both vehicle modes, but he still kind of holds true as one of my favorite classics toy. There's a lot going on to him, and being in the classics line, Triple changing is about the only gimmick you could get out of the entire series. So, for that, I think he stands very well all on his own and has a lot of value to him. And if you can get the Henke version that has some sensible chrome and a much more anime accurate color scheme, all the better. Just make sure you are imaginative enough to see things like, you know, flat boxes on a bullet train or bullet train parts hanging off of a space shuttle because part of your brain is going to have to rationalize that to enjoy the toy. Eh, it's Transformers. It's weird sometimes that way. At least there's no tank turret hanging off the bottom of a jet.